Welcome everyone to today's seminar. It's a pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Yari Multisilta. He's a professor of multimedia at Tampere University of Technology and also University of Helsinki in Finland. And his uh, training is in mathematics and uh, he, did his, he did his PhD on hypermedia-based learning environments. His current research interests are networked and mobile learning, video storytelling, and digital game-based learning. And uh, in today's talk, he will tell us how students can be motivated to learn by uh, collaboratively creating and sharing video stories on mobile platforms. So welcome, Jerry. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'd like to thank MediaX for inviting me to tell you um, about my research on, on mobile technologies, video storytelling, and learning. Okay, so um, I live in a small town in Finland, in, in Pori, and this is actually where the university there is, this building back there, and um, to remind you where far, far away Finland is, it's, it's there. And um, we are almost at the polar circle, so the polar circle is about there. And of course, now we are here in sunny California. But anyway, um, I've been here a couple of times as a visiting scholar. Um, Professor Roy P. has been my, my host. I've been at 8 star. Um, and we've been doing research together in, in this um, storytelling and learning and educational technology area. I was also two years at Nokia Research Center doing the research on learning and mobile technologies. That was back in 2008 and 9. But my research area has never been like multimedia uh, algorithms or, or that, but it's more like applications of multimedia for, for learning. And today I'm going to tell you um, Results, all my results are based on two research projects. The first one is, was called Finable 2020 um, from 2011 to 2014. This was a quite big research project in Finland that the University of Helsinki was coordinating and Tampere University of Technology was there also. I was uh, um, the co pi here in this project together with Professor Hanna Lenieni. And um, we did this together with Stanford, so Roy's uh, researchers were there also doing something with, with this one. And the other one is uh, SAVI, Sa Science Across Virtual Institute. So we had this kind of joint research program uh, between Finland and United States for two years, 2013 and 2014. And this was coordinated by um, Professor Eric Hamilton from University of Pepperdine, and I was the coordinator in Finland. This project was funded by NSF and, and the technology uh, innovation funder TECES in Finland and Academy of Finland. But in all these projects, we actually been doing research on video storytelling and learning and learning technologies, how students can collaborate over digital video. What we want to teach or what we want to actually that students learn are 21st century skills. And there are many kinds of listings. What are the skills that kids in the future will need? This is one of those lists. We think that this kind of uh, skills are, are important for, for jobs today and also in the future. Unfortunately, uh, in schools, schools tend to focus more on like math or more on like history. But these skills are coming more visible in curricula also. So, but we thought that digital storytelling, digital video is something that we actually could use um, to, so that kids learn these important skills. The role of technology has been discussed quite a lot in, in schools. I think we all, all think that, yes, we have to learn to use technology in, in a meaningful way. But what's the meaningful way? So technology should 
be seen as a, um, as a tool that creates thinking processes or learning processes. It's not a value itself, but it's something that helps you to solve the problem or create new ideas, be creative. I think this cube is, is a con cognitive tool because when you try to solve it, you probably have to think quite a lot. So these kind of tools we would like to see. And video storytelling is, I think, one of, one of this kind of cognitive tool. In my, my talk today, I will show you three examples of how we use digital video for learning. The first one is digital storytelling um, on Finable project. The second one relates to video inquiry, a pedagogical concept Roy and I have been developing. And the last one is about structured inquiry. And the video has central role in all these examples but it has a little bit different role in all these examples. So, so let's go to the first one, digital video storytelling. I think that we humans have always been storytellers. Our ancestors gathered around open fireplaces, they told stories, they distributed their learning, their culture, to next generations by telling stories. And when we learn to write, to things, put things to paper, paper rolls or the books, that, that was the new media for transform, transforming our culture to next generations. And we still tell stories, stories. We tell stories in a classroom, we tell stories in a movies, in a books. Kids tell stories using Snapchat and this kind of new media. So we are storytellers. But the school don't use video and stories that much. Before we started the Finable project, we did a study in Finland um, about how kids, I mean the first graders to high school students, how they use technology in schools. And, um, or outside school. And we realized that they, they use video, internet video, like every day, very, very much. So back in 2011, they used, like girls used, 61% um, of all girls used internet video every day. 70% of, of boys used, used YouTube or other kinds of services what was available at that time. And since that, these figures are growing, I think. Um, I did a quick survey um, how, how much people use, how much teens or young, young students use Snapchat and Instagram, probably the two most popular video applications or image applications on internet nowadays. So in Finland, and also in the United States, about 30-35% of all, all teens use Snapchat. It seems that Snapchat is actually um, for college-aged students' service. So 77% of, of college-aged students use Snapchat, like every day. Um, Instagram is like not that popular in... in in the same age groups, but it's still very popular. 60% of all um, school kids use Instagram in Finland and 52% in the United States. Th these are the sources that I, I used here. So anyway, these are very big numbers. And uh, in, in the Finnish study, they also asked um, how they use, how, how kids think they use internet. So they, they asked, how, how many of you uh, create images? How many of you create videos on internet? And um, surprisingly, kids said that like about 30% of all kids um, created um, 
images on internet services and less than 10% think that they create videos on internet. And this is surprising because anyway they create Snapchat videos. But they don't, the, the kids, they don't think that if you do a Snapchat it's a video or it's a that kind of thing that you would consider to be internet video. So I claim that this kind of understanding what kind of media the kids are doing is changing. They don't consider it like a big deal if they do a, a short video clip on internet. Do those figures include any editing or is that just the initial creation, like taking a photo and recording a video? This, uh, this could include editing also. But it's not so restricted to that. No, no. So it could no. be very, very cursory. Yeah, yeah. But I think that they didn't understand when they were responding to the questionnaire that, that this is, if you take a Snapchat, it would be like making a video. Okay, this was the background. So we decided that we would like to bring video to schools. Um, so we wanted to create digital storytelling um, as a pedagogical method. We wanted to bring a tool where kids could create stories, share the stories with others, uh, remix video clips, and make meaning with videos. We also needed a pedagogical framework and uh, Professor Hannele Niemi and I designed a global sharing pedagogy. It's a kind of a framework where we combined um, 21st century skills thinking and collaboration and sharing thinking and created a model and we measured this model um, that how, how this model and the features in this model actually support uh, learning thinking. I'll come back to that later, but um, there is a book. Um, if you want to see it, it's here, I'll pass it, um, where we tell more about this model. So we created a, a platform, it was called Movie, Mobile Video Experience. Um, where you could share your stories, you could take a video clip with your mobile device, upload it to the service, and in the service you could create stories based on the clips what you had uploaded or the group you belo belonged to had uploaded. Um, there were clients for iOS and Android, uh, still are, um, and uh, you could use location information if you wanted to. And um, in, I, I would say that this is something that is like combination of Snapchat and Instagram, but it includes safe environment in, in the sense that it's um, closed, you need to have a, a user ID, and there was also a moderation. So the teachers were moderators. The teacher could decide if somebody, um, if, if my students should actually uh, be moderated or could, could they be uploaded. The videos, what they uploaded, could they appear here uh, without the moderation. And we didn't have any, any problems with the content. Because the students know that there, there is the possibility that this is moderated. Right. Um, in the pilot, we had 23 schools in, in three countries here in California, in Finland, and in, uh, in Greek. 29 teachers, more than 2,000 uh, users in total, and um, over 6,000 um, videos was uploaded to, to the service. So this is a pretty pretty good number and um, I will next show you short examples of what kind of videos they did uh, during, during this project. So we as a researchers we didn't restrict the content. So it was up to the teacher or teachers to decide what's the content and what kind of 
um, curricula there is, what, what goals, learning goals there are. So these are examples of, of the content, of the stories what, what the kids created. And, and then the schools were like from the, we even had one kindergarten in California and one in, in here in California and one in Finland. But most of the classes were like four or fifth graders. We had some high schools, but more, most of them were like fifth, four or fifth graders. Some of the stories were like expressing your opinion and trying to affect to other on your own opinion. Animal testing was one of those. So they created a story about what they think about animal testing, what could be done, what's, what's, what, what's important in that. Homelessness was another. Um, video that that was a story um, of the, of this recycling. This is a pretty nice example of of the story. These are Finnish girls, uh, fifth graders. They created a story about recycling. So she had her used clothes or over her bed, and she don't want to use them anymore. But she she's thinking what what she's going to do with the old old um, trousers and old shirts and so on. And then there is another girl who pretends to be her mother and, and the mother is actually advising um, the daughter how to recycle. This is energy waste and this is something you could give the Red Cross to be distributed to, to poor families and so on. And they did it, uh, they, they, they did the script beforehand, so it was like well planned. They were planning the filming angles, where the camera should be, and they did it all in English. So it was also like learning English language. So it integrated the topic itself, but also <coughs> the language learning. Um, Kids to Arnold, the kindergarten, Two kindergartens, one in here in California, one in Finland. They were really interested to use this technology, but then they were thinking that how kids of five, five year old kid, how could she or he create a video and share it with with same age kid in Finland? Well, it turned out that it's very good to do with with a toy. So. The Californians, they wanted uh, to send a sea lion to Finland, to the kindergarten in Finland. And um, it's, it was called Arnold. And Arnold wanted to learn Finnish. So the Finnish kids actually teached Arnold a few words of Finnish. And, and the teacher was filming these teaching sessions. And I bet that there are a group of kindergarten students here in California who speak very fluent Finnish in small scale at least. So it was very popular and, and they extended it. Um, Finns sent their own toy to California and they wanted that kids here in California teach that toy um, games. What kind of games and plays they do uh, in a kindergarten. So it was sharing the, their day-to-day -day life in kindergarten, sharing their culture, actually. Um, okay, and then there were other stories. So here in, in physics, they filmed a physical experiment, what they did in a lab. I'll come back to this kind of video later. Ancient myths. Greek students uh, were partic participating in a project where they shared their local history. And of course, we know that in Greek, there have, have quite a bit of local history. Finnish kids were learning ancient Greek history. So they wanted to learn something what, what, uh, what they in Greek were sharing with the school in Finland. So they created a place uh, where Zeus and other gods appeared and did many kinds of things. So they made uh, those stories from the school book 
live. And because they were filming on site, on the places where, or about the same places where these stories were supposed to happen. So it was much more concrete. Kids of my age is doing a story, uh, filming it there where it, it was happening. So it's very engaging. And I have one example soon of, of that. The, first, uh, the last one here, um, harassment. This is also something what uh, Greek students did. 15-year-old group, group of girls, or 15-year-olds, um, wanted to express their opinion about harassment. So they created a story where, where there was a girl and she was on the internet and her um, relationship with, a, with her boy, boyfriend has, had broken. So she was very sad and then she was on a, on a discussion group and uh, somebody wanted to help and then this somebody wanted to meet and it turned out that this somebody was like grown up male who wanted to, you know, harass this girl, 15 year old girl. So I think that this was very strong opinion. It was very difficult topic, but they did it in very nice way and they expressed their own opinion. It was really important for the girls who did this that they could express their own, own thinking on this. Okay, now I show you the first example. It's um, Europe and Angel. This is something what the Greek students did uh, in, in, in their local history project. And this was done in 2012, I think, in the end of 2012. Uh, and I'll come back to that soon, but let's see the video. So this is a story about how the money was born, how the money was invented. And they created the play, um, they did subtitling. Okay, you get the idea. Um, this was done at the same time when the Greek financial crisis were on the news in Europe all the time. So the kids, even the fifth graders knew that, okay, that again we are lending more money to Greeks. And the kids there created this kind of video. You can imagine how much thoughts this uh, video created there in a classroom, what kind of discussions the teacher could lead uh, her class in after seeing this video. So I think that this was really, really, really good example of sharing meaningful content to other kids and talking and learning from that. that. Okay. Um, we were, and we wanted to um, create environment where w what would be engaging. And we um, kind of figured out that engagement includes at least these two components. There is hard work component. That means that you are willing to push hard to learn something. You, you, you are willing to do your work whatever it is, reading, creating a paper, creating a video. Um, but there is also fun element. So you have to uh, have that kind of um, pro learning process where there is fun component. 
And it does not mean that you are actually smiling all the time that you are doing something. Fun could be also part of hard work, but it's something that comes afterward. When you are gaining something, you get the reward, the fun element. And we think that fun element and hard work element was present when kids created these digital stories. So, um, in this project we ask from the teachers uh, what do they think, uh, how learning process went on in, in this environment. These are some of the, uh, the, um, the answers. Um, 28 teachers were responding to this questionnaire, so it's relatively small group, but anyway, I think we, we got pretty good opinions. So, um, these are the, these are related to um, the 21st century skills. So we claim that the kids actually learned 21st century skills based on um, teachers' thinking. And we trust that teachers can, uh, can uh, or can evaluate the learning process. We didn't do any uh, pre-tests and post-tests. We didn't measure the learning outcomes as such. Um, there was also a st uh, strong relation between um, engagement and these two elements. So group work, so collaboration was really important here and the technology itself was really important. So they correlated heavily to fun element but they correlated heavily also uh, to hard work element. So in that sense we, we would say that uh, group work and meaningful, easy to use technology was really important for the learning uh, experience. All right, then we go to the next one, video inquiry based learning. And inquiry, I guess you all have the idea what is inquiry learning. So it's something where you um, make questions, you are like looking for new things and you are, you are, you are um, exploring the world. And we want it to kids to explore the world through their mobile device lens. So we wanted them to use their camera so that they pick up um, physical, chemical or other, other kinds of um, phenomena in their surroundings and use that as an outcome uh, or as a starting point for making questions. Okay, uh, this is uh, the definition of inquiry learning. So it's a, a process of exploring, asking questions, making discoveries, creating new understanding. We also think that inquiry learning uh, correlates with higher order thinking skills. So when you do, when you explore, uh, when you make questions, you also have to think you are actually using a cognitive tool there. So I'd like to cite my colleague, Professor Roy B. here. He um, put this very nicely, that video here has a bridging function and video can also generate science talk. So it's familiar for the kids to use video, to use technology. We can sparkle science talk using this in a classroom. So thank you, Roy, for that. Um, this is the first example. Um, this is actually um, a short video made in, in Los Angeles area where they wanted to use this tool to create their own Khan Academy. So students created um, videos where they solved math problems and explained the problems to others. The outcome is like not as professional as Khan Academy, but anyway, I think the best thing happened when the student was planning 
how she could explain uh, this process to others so that they really understand it. So that was where the learning happened and the video was only a tool for, for that. Okay. But then we went on and we, um, like we gave guidelines to the classes that take a short video and make questions out of the video. This is uh, an example of what, what the teacher and the researcher were, were doing like as an example. They had a seven second uh, video here where somebody is opening the refrigerator door. And the goal was do, do questions about this video. So there could be like what causes the electricity to make the light bulb work or how does the refrigerator keep the food cold and so on. And these would be like starting points to learn more deeply using other methods, using books, using um, discussion with the teacher and so on. But this is like the starting point. Okay, so first um, or in the next slide I'll show you an example of, of video. It's pretty simple video. This guy is running. I guess this might be from here. And then we want to know what kind of questions you can make out of this video. So probably let's, let's do so that you, you try to make a question out of this video. It, it can be anything. Who has a question? How far around the track did he run? Yeah, that's a good one. What else? Mm -hmm. And these are examples of the questions what the students came up. So very, very good questions. So this, is, this was the goal to see science around you using, using these videos and then continue learning using whatever method fits best to the situation. This is one, one more example, actually. Um, very short video, the, the bottle is rolling there, but the mechanics is quite complex because there is liquid inside the bottle. And that causes the, the bottle to go back and forth. And, and actually very complex situation, but it, it looks very simple. I don't know how they continued from, from that. Probably they didn't do the physical model, like full, full blown model, but anyway. So they learned to make questions. And um, the last example is about structured inquiry. So we took a step forward. Um, we wanted to go a little bit more detailed. So we wanted to give uh, kids um, a script or a procedure that they should follow, uh, create a structure of an experiment, for example, and then use video there as a documentation tool. So in structure in inquiry, students get uh, the outline of the work. It's in in very typical case, it, it could be like um, an experiment in a physics or, or chemistry lab. And um, then we combine video to that process. And we wanted to learn how the video could help to learn more in, in structure inquiry-based situations. Based on other researchers, it seems a good idea because video anyway supports the engagement um, kids to the STEM subjects that otherwise tend to be too theoretical or not uh, in their like in their real lives.
kids might think that science is something that is not happening here in their ordinary life. Well, anyway, maybe media could help uh, to bring that better there. In this experiment, we had two fifth grade classes in Finland, um, 50 students in total. And um, they had a period of five weeks where they had 10 45 minute lectures. They created a total of 53 digital stories. And um, they had a process that they did an experiment in a chemistry lab. This was one lesson. Then they went to um, their ordinary classroom where the teacher talked, discussed with the students about the experiment and presented some theory also. And the third, um, third time when they went to the classroom was editing the story because they were filming, they were recording uh, with their mobile devices when they were, they were in, a, in a chemistry lab. So in this phase they kind of revisited what they did in a chemistry lab. And um, yes, the average length of a story was 50 seconds. I think it resembles quite nicely what there is in general, what kind of videos there are in internet. So, um, well, Snapchat videos are shorter, but many other videos tend to be like half a minute or maximum one minute. Stories were watched over 2,000 times during this uh, pilot phase and some were more popular than others. Some were watched only five times, but the best ones were watched like 165 times. I will show you one, one video, one example. This is the making of Super Bowl. So it was like polymerization kind of um, experiment where they created um, a ball, a plastic ball that was supposed to bounce using very simple um, ingredients and um, so they had the, the experiment, they had a structure for the experiment, what they did in a, in a chemistry classroom. And this is the outcome of one group. It's in Finnish, um, the voice is in Finnish, but I'll explain you. So there, there is a pair. And the guy, guy who is filming is also giving advice to this person who is actually doing the experiment. So he had already done his own Super Bowl and he was helping at the same time. So this is a typical example. It included all the phases that the experiment uh, needed. You have to uh, have the original ingredients, um, then you, you do the polymerization, and then you like um, use cold water to make the form stable. And the, the person who was filming was also a, guiding that use a little bit less water to save the water. So he was very, um, I think, very, very good on, on that. But this was a um, good example. And then we analyzed these videos, what kind of uh, things they were filming. Some were not filming all the phases. And um, this video was like uh, from start to beginning, one shot. But some groups did it in parts. So there were different strategies to do that. Some of the findings. So uh, this was motivating. They wanted to do it. It was not like considered like extra thing or something. 
most of the stories were close-up shots. So they were focusing on, on the thing what they were doing with their hands and showing that exact thing. But as you saw, the camera work was very shaky. So they were not planning beforehand, uh, like using any, any equipment to uh, make the camera steady. Or they didn't have um, a script for what they were speaking. So they were speaking spontaneously. Um, but anyway, they were speaking science talk. They were talking about the topic. and They were helping others. There was also a discussion board uh, on, the, on the movie site. So they had some comments there like the recipe, what, what you had there, or they were like supporting comments, this is cool, and that kind of things. After the experiment, they were asked to create mind maps. Um, the class A used mind maps for assessing the learning. Uh, class B didn't uh, have that requirement, so they only did it like as an outcome of, of the process, but it was not assessed as a part of their course grade. And the outcome, the class A mind maps were much more detailed, and we could say that the, the understanding of the whole process were, were deeper here in, in the class A. But also the class A got more guidance on how to do the mind maps. The class B teacher didn't give that kind of guidance, so they are not really comparable. And um, based on the teachers, both groups actually learned the topic quite well. So what we learned, um, we would like to bring more creativity to these kind of documentary videos. So we probably need to give ideas to students that you can, after you have, have the clip there and you have filmed all the steps, you could have a last clip where you could say what, what did you think about this, what did you learn, so kind of interview piece there. We learned that um, creating uh, videos and watching them afterwards helps students to remember things, what they did during the lab. So the lab time is not available um, every day. You can go to chemistry lab like once a week probably. But using your videos, you can revisit the lab thing, what you did. So it helps to remember. And when they did the editing work, on the third class, um, they actually processed the information what they had learned. So it provided, um, it, it was another tool to learn deeper about the phenomena. There is uh, one article about this also in the, in the book. So we think um, that this was very um, good example. They learned um, very well. They consider technology to be to be a uh, um, good tool. Um, we were happy of this, these results. Finally, we asked um, of all these projects, um, all, all these uh, teachers who were involved in the projects and, and also some other teachers in Finland, um, what they think about technology and what's What's wrong there? And in Finland, teachers are very eager to try out new technology. Um, but they think that it's challenging to use technology. It's also exciting, but challenging. So though both sides exist. And teachers who already had used videos from internet on the teaching thought that, yes, this is changing how they are teaching. 55% of Finnish teachers, secondary school teachers, used ICT for place-independent teaching. So they had some kind of activities where students did something on their own while at home or while uh, outside the classroom. And um, they also communicated 
uh, with other schools, but, but not that much. So we could increase the collaboration between schools in, in, in here. Teachers consider, think that they don't have enough equipment, although uh, I think that European level studies show that Finland has very good situation on, on equipments at schools. We are above the average in European level. Student, they, teachers said also that students do not have enough devices and, and software. Um, but on the contrary, I would say that they have, but, but schools in Finland don't use that potential. So bring your own device is not understand very well in, in the schools. Well, there are reasons of, of that, but I don't go to that. Okay, the book you have seen. Um, the outcome of the process, we started to establish a, a startup on, on mobile video storytelling. Um, we created a, a company who is actually providing this uh, movie platform as a service. Um, the company is called, or the, the tool is not anymore called um, movie, but it's called Edvisto. And uh, I would like to end my presentation by Education showing is the most fundamental building block of human development. However, even though technology is changing every aspect around us, most classrooms still look the same as 50 years ago. But this is changing, just like this school, where teachers and students have started using technology, many other schools have adopted digital tools to improve learning. In 2015, the global spending on digital education surpasses $100 billion. This is almost twice as much as two years ago and represents about 3% of the entire education industry. Only 3%! In 10 years, spendings are estimated to have risen like a tide to an incredible $50 trillion, giving digital education the power to reset the global economy. With increasing access to high-speed internet, the consumption of online media is increasing rapidly. In five years, video content will cover well over half of all mobile internet traffic. A series of research projects led by the University of Helsinki in Finland have studied how this development can be used to improve education, to increase motivation, engagement and excitement, to learn in school. Video storytelling as a teaching and learning methodology emerged. Edvisto builds on this methodology and provides a platform for teachers and students to organize the learning in subject or theme-based projects, where groups of students learn by co-creating, remixing and sharing video stories, as well as collaborating across schools and countries. Edvisto is designed for learning, enabling a fast and intuitive drag-and-drop interface for story creation, so that the focus stays on the learning instead of learning the technology. Edvisto, learning through stories. Edvisto is currently uh, looking for schools that would like to try out the product for free uh, for, for a certain period of time. So if you are interested, you can find more information from the, from the website. And otherwise, I'll thank you. Mm -hmm.